Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, we're gonna to start a series on real survival stories. Stay tuned. In the last video, we spent a couple days with Dan Lutz, a master trapper with 40 plus years of experience. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll make sure and put a link to it up here and then down in the description box. But he has a YouTube channel called Abnormal Outdoors, and uh, I would encourage you to go there and check that out. There will also be a link in the description box for his channel. Great guy. We had a wonderful time. Learned a lot from him, and uh, just appreciate him uh, teaching me and showing uh, all of my viewers here uh, a lot of the skills and things that he has learned over many years of experience. But one of the things that we did after we had set out the snares and got everything prepared and ready for at night is we sat around the campfire. And he started to tell some of the stories that he has experienced out trapping, out in the wilderness, and getting into a lot of situations that, uh, honestly, when you're by yourself, uh, can be dangerous and even deadly. So I recorded some of those conversations, and I'm going to share that with you right now. All right, well, here we are around the campfire, and uh, Dan's going to share with us a story or two <laughs> from some of his adventures out on the trap line. Well, Dan, go ahead. Tell us, tell us a story. Tell us a story. Yeah, what, well, what's happened to you when you've been out well, in the backcountry? It's usually bad stuff that I did. <laughs> you know, making right. mistakes. Uh, trying to push too hard. So you end up in the drink a lot. You get cold. Uh, one, of the, one of the stories I tell is about when I fell in. Right. And I went, I was actually walking down the creek it was a beaver slide, and it had snowed about two or three inches. And this is probably about seven years ago, I guess now. And you know, of course, I'm after work and I'm running. You know, right. I'm trying to get done. And I was carrying my five-gallon bucket of all my gear. I stepped on that slide. I didn't see it. It was an old slide. And it, we went back and measured about 11 feet to the water. And I that's a long way. Yeah, and I slid so fast, and the water was probably about chest deep in there. Hmm. But when I hit the bottom of the creek or the river, it knocked the wind out of me. It, it blew the, it went out of the lung. And the shocking cold was so bad, it was like hit, being hit by 220. That's what I thought it was like. Yeah, I mean, it just hammered me so bad. And now I stand up, it's not deep enough, I can stand up, but you're in a panic mode, you know. Right. And so <laughs> I was... Uh, it's a scary situation to be in. Very scary. How cold was it outside? Uh, it was both freezing and pushing close to zero. Okay. So I am not really sure, but I know it's probably in the teens. Let's, let's call it in the teens. And I knew I couldn't go back up the bank, and all my gear's up the bank. Right. It's a very valuable lesson about putting your gear on your body at all times. Hmm. I did have a big lighter in my front pocket. I took off. The creek was shallow, deep, shallow, deep. I got to shallow. I got out. I said, okay, man, there's no, there was a, you know, the, the brush would pile up against, you know, in the flood. Right. Plenty of wood. No tender. Hmm. How are you going to make tender? I tried to get the cigarette lighter out of my pocket. I couldn't get my hand in the pocket. It was free. Wow. Okay, give you an idea how cold it was. Right. So your clothes were starting to freeze starting on your to body. to freeze. I'm out of the water. The first thing I thought of was lay down in the snow. Right. Try to wick some of this water off of it. Mm -hmm. I did have my hip waders on where I crossed the river. So I laid on the ground, put my feet up in the air to try to get the water out because I'm trying to carry water up this bank. And I get, I can remember thinking, there's plenty of wood, but there's no small tinder. And then I finally got the cigarette lighter out of my pocket and I couldn't move my thumbs. Hmm. Totally could not work a cigarette lighter right. at all. It's too small. Mm -hmm. So I took off running. I started getting a panic mode. I mean, you're starting to, oh no, man, I'm in trouble. I'm probably about a mile, mile and a half in my truck. Not too far. You know, I've been walking the creek back. And the only thing I could think is like, because you start to panic, is to get moving. I kept telling myself, go, mm -hmm. go, go. And I took off, and that's back when I was healthy, you know, and I started trotting as fast as I could. You ever tried to run in waders, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Yeah. And so 
it was kind of funny. I always keep my key, shouldn't say this on video, but around my truck. I never take the keys to the woods with me. Right. So I got my key, but it took two hands to open the door. So your hands are literally freezing. Yeah, so I couldn't feel the key. I couldn't feel nothing. You couldn't even remember. feel the key in your hand. Right. And I'm trying to put it in that keyhole. Right. And my truck's jacked up, you know, and it's right here, and I couldn't do it. Wow. And I finally got it in there, and I turned it to unlock the key. I got my truck, and I remember trying to start it. I had to use two hands to turn it. Hmm. I'm getting cold thinking about it. The wind's kicking up. And then, <laughs> uh, I remember hit like half throttle on my truck. Come on, baby, warm up. And it wouldn't warm. Uh, it, just, it just didn't. Right. So I threw it in gear and uh, drove home. I wasn't that far from the house, probably about four or five miles. And I remember uh, getting in the house, and my wife knew I was in trouble. Yeah. Everything was frozen. So I, I just walked in the shower on ice cold water. No heat, no hot at all. Mm -hmm. And it felt like it was burning. Wow. That cold water felt was burning. So, so your outer layer of skin was actually was actually starting to freeze. Yeah. Yeah. And the clothes were freezing too. I, mean, I couldn't get my pants off. I couldn't get my coat off. We was in the shower trying to peel layers off with me. So I got I got all that off. My thighs were purple. My hands were starting purple. Uh, I still had problems. That's why you see me wear gloves because back of my hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, so out of that situation is I really got home and I started working on it that what did I need? Mm -hmm. What did I actually need? And yeah, flint and steel, man, I love it. Bic lighters is great, flint and steel, ferro rods is great. But I couldn't run them. Right. It's a valuable lesson that you, mm -hmm. so that's when I come up, I told you about the fastest fire, but the road flare. Right. When the road flare's big, I can get two hands on it. Mm -hmm. Well, when I wrapped it with rubber, and then I wrapped it with duct tape, it'll go a flame like a fire. Mm -hmm. So that, I could have took that bigger, all that piled up stuff, I didn't have to look for my fines. Right. But how that idea grew the tender bag, mm -hmm. the leather tender bag built by Stitch Gear Outfit. Right. I designed that bag because it's waterproof, because my tender now has become more important. Now I've turned into tender junkie. I'm looking at <laughs> punk wood all the time. I'm looking. Anytime right. I'm doing a woods walk, man, I'm looking. For right. It changes your perspective it forever. It really does. Yeah. I mean, man, I'm a flint steel junkie. I love the romantic side of it. I love doing it. But in reality, that flare, and I took my whole tinder bag and dumped it and fired that flare up, and I'd have me fire, and I'd strip naked. Mm -hmm. I was that cold. Yeah. And when, well, you're better off to get your clothes off when you're in a situation like that. To get, you can get warm faster than trying to dry your wet clothes at the same time. Well, the problem is, is when I decided to take off, now they're freezing. Now you can't get them off. Right. I should have done it as soon as I got out yeah. if I was prepared. Right. The problem also is when I fell, all my supplies were above me. Yes. So now if you notice on my belt, I would call it my Batman utility belt. Right. It's with me all the time now. Yes. That's how, mm. that's how cold I've been. So that's one of the lines. That was one of the <laughs> best uh, stories I could tell you. Right. I mean, there's funny It's a good stories, lesson. But it's a very good lesson because right. beaver trapping is dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous. You can step in a hole with your waders on. I mean, I've been stuck in quicksand with my waders on. I've uh, it's I've been wet. I've been over my waders. I cut cut boots, and if you're running a line like I was, this is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And while you're down there, make sure and check out our merchandise shelf, which is located just below the description box. There you'll find our Teespring link which is where you can buy Great Waypoint Survival merchandise, which goes to help support the channel and the ongoing research that we do to bring you great video content. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos, and we'll talk to you next time. <music>